All right, what's up, heavy hitters? Uh, man, hit up a longtime friend, Stan, and uh, kind of get info on how to go about that, you know, because I'm pretty clueless. Right now, I basically do what I want. I have no, no structure in my diet at all. Yeah. Well, that's what we're here for. We're going to create some structure, get you on a diet, but make sure that you've got yeah. some energy and you got some strength. You don't want to be losing everything you've worked hard for. Yeah, so, definitely. Uh, my co author. Sure <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My co-author at The Vertical Diet, I brought him down today to give you the Cadillac treatment. This is Damon Hell Kuhn, yeah. and Damon's a registered dietitian with a PhD in exercise physiology, and he used to be the former head of the dietetic department at UNLV, he was an instructor there. So, oh, shit. Yeah, we got, uh, we got the best information for you. We're going to make sure we get you the best diet. So Damon's going to kick off with some Q&A yeah. with you and try and help design this for you. Yeah. All right, perfect. Yeah, probably a really good place to start is why don't you kind of paint us a picture of what you're trying to accomplish with this. Where you're at okay. now. Yeah. And where you're headed. Um... So right now, um, I basically want to say I eat two meals a day, two big meals. Mm -hmm. I'll eat a pretty big breakfast, which you know may include eggs, bacon, bread, toast, tortillas, cheese, um, all that kind of stuff. You yep. know what I mean? Probably eating eight to ten eggs, full eggs. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like I said, quite a few pieces of bacon. Just filling up in the morning okay. and then throughout the whole day I really don't eat too much mm -hmm. you know uh, I may not eat at all yeah because uh, you know running around business working out getting things done until I go home and uh, when I get home I'll usually eat maybe about two cups of uncooked rice mm -hmm. so I don't know how many cups right. that is yeah, it's a decent amount yeah, yeah. Um, and then I would say at least a pound or two of beef mm -hmm. you know at nighttime and maybe I'll eat that in two meals or so sometimes all at once depending how hungry i am and then i'll go and you know snack you know what i mean yeah. eat mm -hmm. pop tarts muffins whatever i may have in the cabinets at that time and um and then go to sleep and do it all over so i pretty much have the worst diet you could say right now <laughs> yeah. well and you've, you've ratted your girlfriend out and said that she likes to cook yeah yeah stuff and you, you managed to eat all the extras and yeah so that's part of the Definitely. program so just so folks know, generally speaking, uh, it's, it's going to come down to a calorie equation. We're going to have to look at what you're currently eating and see if we can modify the total quantity okay. to, to start to put you at a calorie deficit to lose weight. Mm -hmm. uh, it does, the frequency doesn't matter that much. If you eat two meals a day or five meals a day, that really okay. doesn't have a significant impact. If you equate for calories and protein intake, okay. that's not going to matter too much. Uh, but you did mention that you had kind of a, a downtime later in the day where you got really hungry. Yeah, and that might definitely. have caused some of that binging at night. No, and exactly. So we're all, we are going to try and modify and get you a third meal, not because yeah. it has any specific benefit over over three, you know, over two meals in terms of total caloric intake, but because it, it might help you with sustainable energy, and then you'd right. be less likely to gorge at, at night. night. So help your satiety and not have yeah. You. Over, yeah, or no, do it when you actually to get to it, you know what I mean? So, so we'll let Dana yeah. pick it off from here. Yeah, so um, physically kind of give us a little idea of, you know, obviously we don't want you to lose strength and everything, but right. like, I, ideally where would you like to be with this physically? Because now we know where <coughs> you started at in terms of eating. Current weight. Um, current weight, I would say I'm about 350. And okay. You want to, to get to what weight? We were talking, what do you think, about 300 or yeah. so, 310? That's a great number. Yeah. 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 You know. And aside I, from the scale, let's talk about, you know, don't worry about numbers. What, what do you want to accomplish? Um, I just want to feel a little bit more healthy, lose the gut, yeah. you know. I don't um, want to get too shredded. That's not yeah. really what I'm looking for. I like to be a, you know, lose the gut and be a little bit more defined and just feel lighter, feel healthier, yeah. you know. You don't want to look um, like a men's physique girl. No. <laughs> Striated abs. Or no, <laughs> I don't need all that. No, I just... Okay. Want to feel healthier and still feel strong, you right, know, right. be able to move a little better. Stay full. Yeah, stay full. Okay. But, um, but just feel better, look better, and, um, and stay strong, as strong as I can, like yeah. as strong as I am now, if possible, you know. Okay. Awesome. We can definitely help with that. Um, off camera, we already kind of went through the calculations for this, so we're going we're gonna to kind of take a shortcut with this. But just so everybody's aware, kind of the things that we're looking at, when you're calculating calories for, for yourself or, or, you know, somebody else, we're looking at your age plays a big role, your activity level plays a big role, um, your height barefoot, okay, so not your height in, in your stiletto <laughs> shoes or, or whatever, your platforms, um, and, and then your body weight, right? So as your body weight changes, your, your caloric needs are gonna change because now you're moving less weight, right? right? So as you lose weight, there's gonna be some adaptation and we're gonna make changes as we go through this for you, okay. you know, as appropriate. So this is a starting point and, and I, I hope the audience really understands that 
we can do all the calculations in the world and we can use all the formulas in the world. It's still a little bit of an estimate. And right. so there's going to be some trial and error. Um, so we're going to give you our, our best, you know, recommendations up front. We're going to see how that works and we're going to monitor it. Right. So that's where I think a lot of people, you know, they get these calculations and they think like, this is just, this is this perfect calculation and it's going to work forever. And it, that's not how it goes. So there's, there's a constant, um, revisiting of that, seeing how it's working for you. How are you feeling? How's your digestion? How's your sleep? You know, and all right. these other things. And then looking at the numbers, are you actually hitting those numbers? You know, are yeah. you, are you really eating that much? Are you eating more than that, less than that? How's that going? Is your activity the same? So all of those factors are going to change on a daily basis, but overall we're looking at an average here. So, okay. um, so where we have you right now in terms of calories. So when I, when I put in big boys information, his, BMR, his basal metabolic rate is about 2,500 calories. Okay. And so what that number means is that that's the number of calories that you need to consume just to lay in bed awake and be alive. Okay. Oh, shit. Literally laying down in bed. <laughs> okay. So that's resting metabolic rate and basal metabolic rate getting tossed around a lot in, in words. The difference is resting metabolic rate is sitting up in a chair, basil's laying down. So there, okay. that makes a difference. And so, okay. cause you're in a more alert state. So we don't ever really want you eating less than that because okay. that's going to be really counterproductive and your metabolism will take a hit. So um, your real caloric intake is going to be somewhere in the range between about 3,600 to 4,100 calories. And so um, these are really specific numbers for macros, but that equates to about 250 grams of protein, 500 grams of carbs, and about 75 grams of fat. Because that adds okay. in his activity level. Right. That's factoring in his daily activity. That's his non-exercise activity, which is his, you know, getting ready for your day, brushing your teeth, going to work, things like that, plus your training. Plus your training. Um, so all of those things factor in. And so the, the way we set this up, we, we talked about this the other day, um, we're going with a little bit more low fat approach um, to give you a little bit more carbohydrates. Okay. And so part of the reason we're doing that is to help you stay full. Okay. Um, and, and those seem to be kind of the foods that are gonna drive your exercise and your okay. performance for what you're trying to do. Um, and we're trying not to really mix the fat and the carbs together because that seems to be where the problem comes in in dieting is if you okay. start introducing a lot of fat and a lot of carbs together, that seems to be an issue. So okay. there's a lot of different ways to get to the, the end goal, you know, and you can do a low carb thing, but in, in that case you would increase fat. We're just taking a different approach. So cool. and we're going to see how you to retain uh, more energy right. mm -hmm. and more strength. You find that exactly. when you drop carbs out, all of a sudden, yeah, that's yeah. what I've heard. Your big lifts start to drop yes, and that so. becomes cool. hard on the, on the mind. Yeah. Also, if you drop carbs out, you lose a significant amount of water initially. You might lose okay. five, seven pounds of water in a few oh, days, shit. but that is going to have an effect on your strength and it's yeah. not really going to be, uh, it's not going to be fat. So it, right. you'll, just water, the scale yeah. will make a change, but you won't really have realized any benefit in body composition. So right. we don't have to do any trickery here. This is a long-term goal. It's a lifestyle exactly. that's going to get you where Definitely. you want to be, but hold on to as much muscle strength and energy as possible. Yeah. yeah so. And like we talked about earlier, you know, we may, we may adjust this. We may up your protein a little bit. We may pull the carbs back a little bit at different times, depending on where we're at in your journey and okay. your progress okay. um, and, and what's going on, right? So um, set up a hierarchy and say that yeah. first was calories, mm -hmm. second is protein, your yep. macros really, and, and the most important one being protein. Okay. And where you put carbs and fats really kind of depends on your goal and, and your okay. personal preference. Uh, and then third was the meal timing you just mentioned. Yep. We might put some carbs around workouts. We'd like you to eat at least three times a day if possible. Yeah, at no, least add definitely. one more meal to try to give yourself uh, something in between those, so that by the time you get to that second meal, you're not just ravished. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that'll probably reduce a little bit of your your you know craving at that meal, and the fact that you know you can probably just bulldoze through the the hunger cues and just really go at it. So, right. Um, okay. It'll help you feel fuller. You know, it may or may not make you feel better throughout the day, but it's definitely going to you know reduce your appetite hunger when you get to that last meal. So. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, and then we were also looking at, uh, we want to make sure you're getting enough sodium. Okay. So we want to make sure that you're, uh, salting your meals to taste. Um, and so that's going to look a little bit different for everybody. So in terms of sodium content, we recommend you salt your meals to taste and that, that should be a good starting point. Um, along with that, you know, the foods that we pick for you in particular are right. going to be pretty high in potassium. So, um, a lot of people, when we start talking about sodium, people are like, oh my God, your blood pressure, you know? Right. And so, uh, that's how we manage that because it's a, it's a, there's, it's a balancing act. Okay. Of all those, those nutrients working together. So as long as we're 
getting enough potassium, calcium, and magnesium. We're going to push the sodium a little bit to also keep that energy level up, keep you feeling good. Um, that's going to help you take in some of the nutrients. Yeah, and help you with satiation. Mm -hmm. Sodium and potassium yeah. can help prevent you from getting some sugar cravings. Okay. In addition to the fact, as Damon mentioned, salt will give you certainly a good energy and performance and stamina and endurance when training and better recovery. Okay. So we keep it in there. And as mentioned, some people are concerned about blood pressure. If you salt to taste and you get adequate potassium in, you won't have that effect. Okay. Uh, that's been well studied. So it's a, it's kind of a misnomer and a myth. And we're cautious not to pull sodium out because then people get really tired and really weak. Okay. Uh, and, and they get brain fog and hangry yeah. and, and mm -hmm. then we lose the diet. Right. <laughs> and kind of going along with that, you know, part of that's going to come from, you know, we, we recommend using some sort of an iodized salt, you okay. know, so you're getting your iodine. Um, additionally, we recommend the cranberries so that it's, you know, we, we don't want the from concentrate, we want the non-frozen, we want the pure stuff. You can get it at Trader Joe's or you can get the liquid cranberry stuff. Um, it's basically the same thing and that's for the iodine. iodine. Um, for that thyroid will, function. Yeah, for thyroid, thyroid function, function. That's going to help a lot with energy levels. You drink that in the morning? Yeah, yeah just a few ounces juice, gives you 300% of your daily iodine, mm -hmm. RDA. Yeah, you don't need much. <laughs> your thyroid needs, um, needs iodine. Try okay. iodothyrone and iodine is part of your thyroid function and so we give you that on a daily basis so you have more energy, your basal metabolic rate okay. it doesn't slow down as significantly as it might in, in a deficit. Mm -hmm. um, when we get a blood panel back, we'll look at your vitamin D. Everybody's we, usually we, uh, pretty deficient. Yeah. Stan saw that, remember? Yeah. 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 We um, looked over that, so we already made some recommendations in that yeah. regard. Awesome. Yep. So, um, and then in terms of sleep, are you using a CPAP? No, I had uh, spoke to Stan. I haven't. Okay. He recommended. We're working for sure. on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We we may or may not want to incorporate that. You know, because that'll be pretty big. Yeah. My uh, guess yeah. is it's pretty likely with the yeah. with your weight and the thickness of your neck that if you're snoring and waking up tired, it's a pretty good indicator that you have some degree of apnea. Right. And using a CPAP will help with a number of things. Not only does it decrease your blood pressure, uh, which of course is very important for a cardiac risk. Uh, but it also helps uh, with your testosterone levels, your metabolism, for your for your thyroid function. Uh, but another big one is it helps with hunger. When mm -hmm. you don't get adequate sleep, then your ghrelin hormone keeps doesn't get uh, suppressed, and mm -hmm. you end up being hungry all day. And so sleep can really yeah. help with that. Plus, it helps you during weight loss to lose more fat than muscle. When you don't get adequate sleep, you lose more muscle than fat. Mm -hmm. it, it, it'll, it'll flip the script on you. So it's, yeah. it's pretty important, and all those things I just mentioned to you are intended to make you yeah, uh, no, those are very you know, important. consider getting one. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of, you know, specific foods, for those of you who aren't really familiar with the diet, I mean, we, we really recommend red meat in terms yeah, of our primary no, I love red meat for uh, sure. protein. And the reason we do that is because, you know, we're working on a good, better, best scenario here. We, we're going to recommend the most optimal foods that we, we feel are most optimal in terms of right. driving the nutrients that we're trying to get. So red meat, you know, everybody, I hate the term superfood, but if there is one, that's probably it. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, that's why we recommend so much red meat because it's, it's basically a delicious multivitamin. It's higher in iron, it's mm -hmm. higher in B12, it's higher in zinc, it's higher in selenium. It's just a better food for dieting on if you're trying to optimize performance. You need right. those things to, to perform in the gym as well. You're not going to get all those things in chicken and white fish and things like that. You can um, get adequate protein from those things. Yeah. Right. But you won't get the, uh, the additional benefit of the micronutrients that are in there. And since we're going to start working you towards a calorie deficit, yeah. it's pretty important the types of foods we need because we don't have as much room to work to get right. those micronutrients in. Plus, yes, the, the red meat's going to be you know, a really good source of zinc <coughs> and magnesium, and those are really good for testosterone support. Okay. Um, so those are also in there. And then, you know, the whole eggs, you're already doing that, which is great. Okay. You know, and that's are, another one that's huge for mm -hmm. the choline in whole eggs, the yolk in particular, okay. is great for liver function. Okay. And as many of the larger athletes, as I experience, as many of the athletes I've worked with experience, they tend to get fatty liver disease as they start to gain weight, and the fatty liver will drive high blood sugars, which all of those things end up in yeah, the, not good for you. cascade of, of potential cardiovascular problems. And so the way we get in front of that is with choline, the liver is regenerative, and it will uh, can prevent and heal itself if given okay. the right nutrients. So you would think it's, it sounds counterintuitive to throw whole eggs at, it, at yeah, somebody yeah. who's trying to lose weight, but in fact it acts to your benefit. And so okay. we're gonna definitely get the whole eggs in there. Again, calories being most important, macro second, as we work our way down meal uh, timing, and then finally micronutrients. Mm -hmm. There's some very specific benefits from those micronutrients, choline from whole eggs being one of them. Yep. Okay. And then we'll, you know, as long as you're, you're able to take in uh, dairy without a, a big issue, you know, that's a pretty big component too. We recommend three servings of dairy, and that's primarily for calcium. 
Um, dairy is going to be the most bioavailable source of calcium, meaning that you absorb it the best. Okay. Um, and that's going to be huge for muscle contraction, blood pressure. I mean, nerve you know, signaling. Nerve People signaling. People don't appreciate how important it is for activity, for mm -hmm. performance. You just think calcium, you just think bones. You think women and osteoporosis, right. but that's not the case at all. It's, it's so much more important than that. And again, if you've got a lactose intolerance or if you've got a whey allergy, then dairy is not for you. Or you have to start working your way down from a high lactose milk to a much less lactose, more easy to digest, say yogurt. Or hard uh, cheese. Or you get down to hard cheese, which mm -hmm. is almost lactose free, and you can get the calcium. So milk is okay? Milk's okay for those people who can tolerate it. There's okay. a percentage of the population that, that can't do well with lactose, and then it could be dose dependent as well. You might be able to handle yeah. four ounces, but not 12. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's, it's it all a, starts to compound. Okay. Yeah. And there are some, some lactose free milks out there. Um, Fair Life is, is pretty low. Um, and there's some other choices too, and you can get lactase enzymes for those out there. I mean, some people are just too sensitive, and we understand that. Yeah. You know, that's, we're not saying that you need to go just force yourself to be miserable on it, but um, for most people, we try to figure out what will work within their, their parameters for that. So and we avoid foods that are hard for you to digest. That's right. kind of the yeah. next phase of this conversation is we're going to uh, try and give you foods that are what we call, or what is called, low FODMAP foods that mm -hmm. don't give you a lot of gas and bloating or diarrhea easy okay. to, to digest food so you've got you know good energy you're not battling that so that will be the next step after trying to get you your your proteins from red meat a little bit of dairy some whole eggs that'll provide you your protein a couple mm -hmm. times a week we're going to throw in salmon so you can get your epa and dha it's a couple servings a week if we can get that in for your omega-3s and then now we're on to you know the rest of the food items and we're going to try and make those low fodmap food items Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and part of this too, you know, we're going to, we're going to make sure you're getting some fiber and that's going to come from fruits and, and the vegetables that we're using. You know, we're not a high fiber diet per se, um, which is probably fine. You know, <laughs> like we take some heat for that, but, um, we haven't had any issues. People have no problem digesting and, um, gut microbiome is a thing. So we, that, that's another video, but, uh, for you, we'll have three servings of fruit a day. Um, and we'll have you actually eat the whole fruit. Uh, so you get the fiber cause that'll be more satiating. Um, so basically every time you're eating a meal, you're just going to have like an orange and, and take that in, you know, and so that'll help keep you feeling full. Um, it's going to give you the benefits and some of the digestive enzymes that are in the fruit. And then for uh, the, the fat, you really don't have to worry about getting, right? Because that's going to be in the meat. It's going to be in the eggs. It's going to be in the dairy. Right. You're, you're not really going to have to think about that as much. So yeah. for the carbs, it's going to be your fruit and the low FODMAP fruits and vegetables. So um, for anybody that doesn't know what that is, just Google low FODMAP. There's all types of charts. It's also in the vertical diet. We have a chart in there on, on um, which foods are low FODMAP. They're basically low gas. And so those foods are typically uh, fermented in the large intestine, which creates a lot of gas uh, and creates a lot of digestive distress for a lot of people. So we try to avoid those, give the gut the easiest uh, foods that it can digest. So that's the white rice and so on and so forth. Now for you, we're gonna incorporate potato for sure. And the reason we're gonna do that, it, two reasons. Uh, one being potassium. It's a very high potassium food. So that's going to get you your 4,700 milligrams. The other thing is it's a high satiety food. So you're going to feel full. So there might be meals where we're actually having you mix potato with the rice so that you're getting a little bit of both. And that way it's, it's giving you your amount of carbs, but it's also giving you that, that satiety and that, the feeling of being full. So you're not super hungry for the next meal. Yeah. If you're a 350 pound guy that's throwing around massive amounts of iron every day. You definitely want to get some carbohydrates in there. We're not afraid of those at all. Cool. We're going to create a calorie deficit that give you the kind of fuel that's going to make you strong. Mm -hmm. And Damon Perfect. mentioned with respect to the protein sources, the fats are in the protein. If we want to achieve our goal, as much protein as you need to support your muscle mass, yeah. we've got to use some leaner protein sources. Okay. So I can't throw ribeyes at you. I've got to get you using some top sirloins or right. some um, 94 or 6 uh, yeah. ground beef, you know, we're going to have to get you yeah. into the leaner meats so that, that aren't, don't have too much fat associated with them or we won't okay. have any room for carbs right. and we'll already be over our calorie limit. Okay. So it's a calorie equation. We'll get you with the leaner meats. Uh, top sirloin is usually the one that's been most effective. Yeah. And as far Perfect. as satiety, we'll try to have you use whole cuts like the actual steaks. So it's not ground because that should help a little bit with, you know, you're going to slow down your eating and it's going to make you feel a little bit fuller. So yeah. when you're eating ground beef, monster mash, you tend to be able yeah. to eat more of it faster and you're hungry sooner. Right. But if you cut and chew on steak and you eat high satiety food like a potato and an orange yeah. and a little bit of fiber from you know carrots and even the skin on the potato, you're going to be fuller longer. Mm. Okay. So we, that's one of the ways we address hunger because that's an important component of why people fail. Hunger and energy. When you get tired and hungry, the diet goes to shit. Mm. Right.